Medical Kidnap Show on KFNX Phoenix Talk Radio with Rick Wood and Brian Shilhavi. Welcome to the Medical Kidnap Show. I'm your host, Rick Wood. And I'm Brian Shilhavi, the producer of the Medical Kidnap Show. And I'm also the editor of MedicalKidnap.com, which is part of the Health Impact News Network. Well, Brian, we have quite the show tonight. Why don't you give us a little heads up and tell us what we're going to talk about, what we're going to hear. Yes, Rick, we have a very interesting show tonight. Kathy Hall will be our guest, and we'll be talking with her in a few minutes. And Kathy Hall is a grandmother who lived in Arkansas. She has talked about her story um, frequently in the past few months. And if you do a search on the internet, you'll be able to bring up some of her previous interviews. And Kathy lived in the state of Arkansas. She had a daughter who tragically died. Um, last year, and we're not going to get into the whole story behind her daughter's death because um, what we want to do on this show is show the connection between Kathy's story, as she tells it to us, and what's happening in Arizona. Because these uh, past few shows that we've been doing, the Medical Kidnap radio show on KFNX, what we have been attempting to do is explain to the public what is happening in Arizona. Why is Arizona seemingly a hub for child trafficking? And I've known about Kathy Hall and the story that she's associated with, and and the story I'm I'm referring to now is the story surrounding the state senator, Arkansas state senator, Linda Collins-Smith, and her murder this past summer, which has been in the media. There's been a lot of speculation and things that have been said as to why she was murdered. Uh, That murder investigation is ongoing. And Kathy Hall was someone who was living in Arkansas at that time. She now lives in Colorado, but she was living there. Her daughter lived there before her daughter was uh, tragically killed by um, a driver driving too fast. It was a hit-and-run accident, as um, we'll allude to that later in the show. But... um, I didn't see at first that there was an Arizona connection, but as it turns out, there is. Now, the big event that really has happened since we started doing these medical kidnap shows on KFNX is that federal law enforcement has gone into Arizona and indicted Paul Peterson, the Maricopa County assessor, who was running a uh, an illegal adoption ring, bringing in pregnant women and children from the Marshall Islands. We've covered this in past shows. He was indicted on federal charges and state charges in three different states. Arkansas is one of them. So there is a connection right there. Um, and he was also... Uh, charged in the state of Utah. And so we're going to bring in Kathy, and she's going to tell us what she knows about, first of all, her own case. And in short, Kathy right now is trying to get her granddaughter back. When her daughter died last year, her daughter was very young. She had a an infant child. and Kathy, the grandmother, tried to get access to her granddaughter and has been unable to do so. 
And today her granddaughter is uh, adopted out, was adopted out, and actually lives in another state. Uh, her granddaughter is not even in Arkansas anymore. So we're going to bring her on, and we're going to talk to her about what happened in Arkansas, which is tied into Paul Peterson and Paul Peterson's involvement in um, trafficking children, how that relates to her own case, and how this relates to the murder of Linda Collins Smith. Kathy, welcome to the Medical Kidnap Show. Thanks so much for being on here today with us. Well, thank you for having me. So, Kathy, tell us what happened after you tried to gain custody of your granddaughter after your daughter was killed by the hit-and-run driver. Um, Yes, well, we had gone and seen our attorney who informed us that they would have to release Brooklyn back into our care. Uh, We filed for the court date. Uh, We went in. We sat up at the front table. And we were never addressed as if we weren't there. Um, they asked questions to the, uh, CPS and to the foster family who had her. Um, I kept writing on a pad of paper to my attorney. Why are you not saying anything? They kept mentioning and saying that, uh, my sister had been approved on an interstate compact with Texas. Um, but they felt that she was too wishy-washy and didn't want to send her with my sister. Then they asked about the father, and at that point, um, DHS had, or CPS had said that uh, uh, he had filed for custody of my granddaughter, but seven to ten days later, he um, pulled out, and that they had no idea why. Um, So at that point, the judge had removed the father's rights, and I'm writing on this pad of paper, why are you not saying anything? And uh, he said, well, because he wrote on there, we're next, we're next, we're next, just wait, just wait. Um, they, the judge asked four or five times if my granddaughter was adoptable, and they kept responding, they meaning CPS kept responding yes. Um, at this point, I started to get a little upset. I didn't say anything. I just sat there calmly. And at the end of all of the, well, the foster family, they, the judge asked them if they had any intentions on adopting. And at that point, they stated that, yes, they wanted to adopt. Um, once again, my attorney said nothing. Uh, after this went on for about 30 minutes and the judge had addressed that my daughter had been killed, then uh, she ended the whole thing and said she was going to take a recess. So my attorney at that point said, come on, we walked out the the double doors, not out of the courthouse, but just out of the courtroom. And I said, why are you not saying anything? She is not adoptable. Uh, She has family. And at that point, he says, well, because they're just clearing the way. Our case is going to be heard next. Don't worry. They're going to call us in here. She's just going to take probably a 10-minute recess. And about that time, the double doors opened, and the police officer said, that's it court's over for the day go home and he locked the doors holy cow wow. so yeah. kathy um can you tell us the name of this judge do you mind sharing that oh, i don't mind at all it's judge stacy zimmerman stacy zimmerman okay and after this happened did you have any other opportunities to address the judge or the court to lay your case that you are the grandmother and that you wanted to take care of your granddaughter? Uh, No, we never had the opportunity. Uh, Needless to say, I fired the attorney. We hired another attorney um, who had put in, um, who had filed all all the paperwork to get back into court. And it was uh, about seven weeks after we filed this next time and we were waiting when I put in for, I put in the name of the uh, foster family onto Facebook and it pulled up a picture. I was so excited to see a picture of my granddaughter. I had not seen her at this point in seven months. I see the picture and I finally make it. She's standing there and there's a sign and I'm not paying attention. Anyway, I finally make the picture a little bigger and the sign says it's adoption day. 
You are kidding me. No. We had not even gotten a response back from the court at this point on when our court date was going to be to get back in or anything else. It was almost as bad as the night my daughter died and I was with her to see that sign. It had only been it only been six or seven weeks since the hearing. Is that correct? No, the hearing was in Jan- no, it was in January. The hearing was okay. in January, and uh, we had been waiting. We had uh, the other attorney in the beginning um, that didn't you know, didn't speak up. Um, he stayed on with us, I guess, for about another six or seven weeks after that. Well, that's when I said, "You haven't done anything else. You haven't tried to get back into court," and I fired him. But we couldn't find another attorney for about two months. They did the adoption at this point, um, the end of July. So I guess it was seven months after my daughter died. But we had filed again back in May once we did find another attorney. And right. So you, you had filed. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, we went to every attorney in town, and you have one family court judge in in that area in northwest Arkansas, which is Judge Stacey Zimmerman. Nobody wants to go against her. Nobody wants to go in there on a case that it doesn't look like we have a chance. Nobody would take the case. I mean, it took us two months of going to different attorneys just to find one that would say, okay, I'll take the case. After we had found after I had found the adoption picture and it was on a Friday night that I found it. So I had to wait till Monday just to be even able to speak to my attorney. He said, there's no way they can't do it. It's not legal. Um, we'll get this worked out. Um, they haven't even responded to our petition at this point. And, uh, I guess it was a, later that week. Um, he had finally gotten a hold of the courts and it was another week after that until he got a response back finally. And it stated that I was mentally unstable since the death of my daughter. I had never seen any kind of professional help for mental illness or or any other issues. Um, so at that point, um, he had filed a motion to reconsider uh, that decision. And uh, I went and I started speaking with a grief counselor just to see if, is there something wrong with me? Um, and I was with the counseling service that the courts use, and I purposely went there so that they, it was a credible person for the court. After 90 days of going there, I was asked to, by my counselor if I would like to join them um, at church uh, for their holiday program. And I did. My husband and I had attended with them. And after the, um, the program that they put on, I was asked to be a guest inspirational speaker and they were the biggest church in the area that was televised on Sundays so at that point I had asked my counselor am I mentally unstable I don't understand and he said absolutely not and everything that you've been doing since the death of your daughter and to fight for your granddaughter um, has helped you to get through it it hasn't made you mentally unstable so that whole accusation of my mental that I was mentally unstable was inaccurate with no proof, right? No, there's no evidence. There's no proof. There's no, no. doctor's note that you at all. No. So they're just trying to whitewash it and, and sweep it under the rug, yes. so to speak. Yes. Now, Kathy, at, at what point did you start working with the uh, Arizona Senator, Linda Collins-Smith? The Arkansas Senator. Uh, Arkansas. Yeah. I'm sorry. I keep saying that. <laughs> we're stuck in. We're stuck in. We broadcast in Arizona, so we get stuck in Arizona. So Arkansas is a switch for us. <laughs> um, let's see. That, the adoption and everything. It was probably about March. I had already spoken with multiple um, different people in government about the whole situation with my daughter and my granddaughter. Uh, and I pretty much, you know, I, I heard every promise in the world that they were going to do this and do that. and. Of course, you know, time just passed. That was it. Um, I had uh, the senator and I had a mutual friend um, on a social networking site, and she had put up. I had written something one day about it being really difficult, um, missing my daughter and my granddaughter, and I can't believe. And she had written on on the site that this doesn't have to be difficult. 
pick up the phone and call me if you want some help and put her own personal phone number out out there. And, you know, I'd been told or asked to call her a week prior and I, I didn't because I had lost faith in my lawmakers. Um, but this one, I thought, oh boy, I can't believe she did that. I'm going to call her and tell her to take it down. because She's going to have everybody in the world calling her. Um, so I called her, I told her the entire story and, uh, she was very nice and said that she really wanted to help that she had been dealing with the DHS issues there in the state, um, for quite a while. And, um, but she wanted to look into my case because people have told her things before that were not accurate. I didn't hear back from her for seven or eight days. And when she called back, she actually was crying and said, I'm sorry. It took me so long to call back. I can't believe what I'm reading and what I've seen that's happened in my own state. And I guess that was probably March or April of uh, 2018. And from that day, um, she was still in session as a senator, and uh, she had just lost the uh, re-election. Um, and she said she wanted to try to address this and do all she could before the end of her term. Um, and we spoke probably once a week until about October. Uh, the, I, she asked me to come and testify in front of Senate at the judiciary hearing, hearing for her. Um, I didn't know then that she was the... Uh, the head chair there at that. But anyway, I went out there and um, we spent, I think, a day or two. Get, you know, we'd been talking on the phone, but I mean, we, we really got to know each other at that point. And uh, we spoke every day from that day on until the day she died. Okay. And, and for those who are listening and don't know the story behind Linda Collins Smith, um, she was murdered when, when Kathy says she died, she actually was murdered. It's been confirmed by local police that her death was a homicide. It's still under investigation. So this is the state Senator from Arkansas that stepped in and tried to help you. You tried to get legal help. The original attorney did no help, was no help to you in terms of getting access to your granddaughter. From what I'm hearing you say, the only person who helped you was Linda Collins Smith. Is is that correct? I heard every promise from every lawmaker around until Linda Collins Smith is the only one that truly tried to help, not realizing it would come full circle into her own life. So tell us about this judge. Who was the attorney representing the foster parents that that allowed this adoption to go through? Um, I don't have the actual papers, but I've been told that it was Paul Peterson, that they he had gone to school with the man who has my granddaughter. Um, and also they were both missionaries with the LDS church. Paul Peterson, Paul Peterson who's had indictments in the state of Arizona, Arkansas, and Utah, and is currently under a criminal investigation. That's the Paul Peterson you're talking about, correct, Kathy? Yes, it is. And also, the judge has quite a history. The judge that did the adoption with my granddaughter is the only family court judge in that area where uh, Paul Peterson was having the children illegally adopted out of in Arkansas. Uh, Arkansas is one of the states, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that has filed charges against. Uh, Peterson, as well as Arizona, Arkansas, and there's one other state that they've, so he is the attorney. Utah, yeah. Okay, so this is quite an interesting story, Kathy. What, what can you tell us, or what are you willing to tell us? Because I assume you um, might possibly be involved in Whatever whatever legal proceedings are happening in in conjunction with Linda Collins Smith's death, but how did how did Linda try to help you? You I think you had mentioned previously that she actually went to Arizona right before her death. Is is that correct? Yeah, she was in Arizona. Uh, she had just flown back and was killed within hours of returning from Arizona. 
uh, I had been with her the week prior. I had flown out to Arkansas and I spent the week with her. We had um, done an inter- done two interviews. Uh, one with Conduit News, where we talked about my daughter and my granddaughter and DHS issues there. There had been millions of dollars missing that there had been a second set of books. And she had been investigating that before the end of her term. And um, she had come across some information during all of this that she believed she had figured out where a lot of the money had been going to and how it had been being moved. And I can't get into a whole lot of that but uh, because it's an ongoing investigation. But uh, she... Um, had gone we had, I had flown out there we had done the interviews I left Saturday afternoon I flew back home to Colorado uh, she had flown to Washington DC from on in on Monday she had flown to Washington DC we I was supposed to join her there I was unable to go but from DC she flew straight down to Arizona to for some meetings that she had and to spend some time with her cousin um, she was there until the 23rd when she flew back. I talked to her that morning on the 24th at 1130 in the morning. I was supposed to call her back at 630. And when I tried calling back, it went straight to voicemail. Um, all night I tried to call her. And that any time that it, prior to that, that her phone had died, um, she would text me, plug it in real quick and text and say, Hey, my phone died. I'm charging it. I'll call you right back. Well, this was nothing. I mean, straight to voicemail. She hadn't been on social media, which wasn't like her. And I tried all night, uh, the next morning, um, same thing. And I started getting concerned at that point and started making some phone calls, um, trying to get somebody to go check on her, but there was flooding going on at the time there in Arkansas. We were to do an interview where she was going to uh, publicly talk about some things that she had discovered on Friday. And this, you know, um, it was already set up for us to do the interview together. And um, she didn't make it that far, unfortunately. Uh, it, It took about a week and then they finally discovered her murdered in her front yard. Do you do you know who she was meeting with in Arizona? And and the reason I'm asking is, obviously, we know now after the fact that you know Homeland Security went in there and you know arrested Paul Peterson for his adoption illegal adoption business. Do you know if she was inquiring about that? Was she talking to other? Uh, members of of the legislator there in Arizona is is there anything you can is there anything that you know about those meetings that she went to? I do know that she was discussing it with some lawmakers there, along with immigration issues, but mostly it was uh, to do with um, child trafficking that was going on okay. and that she had uncovered and. Um, I I can't give you specific names of who she spoke with, uh, but there was a few different ones that were from Arizona, yes. And as far as Paul Peterson goes, I believe so, but I couldn't tell you for sure. So, I, I, you know, Kathy, at what point, you know, at first, you know, you're losing, you know, you think you have bad lawyers uh, and you think you're getting railroaded just by this, maybe this one judge that oversees all these cases. You don't think, you know, it's, it goes beyond that. It just seems unfair and you don't know why, but at what point do you start to question whether this is much bigger than just you and your granddaughter and this, uh, adoption court, um, this family court, when did that start to, I mean, I'm assuming <laughs> that you started to think that it was bigger than that. Um, at what point did you, if you did realize it, um, you know, I believed when they took my granddaughter that, oh, we'll get into court. This will all be worked out. You know, I believed in the system and I believed in justice. And uh, my husband is a 26 year retired Purple Heart veteran from, you know, from the military. Uh, he said the same thing. Oh, once we get in, um, as things progressed along and they weren't adding up to me, 
um, why no attorney in the area would go against this judge. Um, I started doing my own research. And when I found out that it was the judge that had been involved in destroying records um, on another very high profile case that had a TV show, um, I don't know if you're aware of it, but the 19 kids and counting the Duggar um, family that she had ordered dis- records destroyed on the oldest boy who I guess was molesting some of the other uh, girls. I started really digging in when I found this out. And there was also another case that was high profile there in Arkansas where a senator running for reelection wanted to expand his family because it looked better. He had three boys. He wanted three girls. Um, these three little girls were one, three, and five years old. They were given to him, although the, the mother had not even lost their rights. From what I've read on the story is that they gave her some money or something, and she signed her rights over. The senator took these little girls in. Um, there was problems with them. He asked them to take the girls back. They refused to take the girls back. He gave them to somebody, and all three of them were severely raped at one, three, and five years old. That is horrendous. After I learned all of this and I read up on it and I was going through everything is when I really became concerned. Uh, The number of adoptions that were being done out of that county really concerned me. But when I would voice it to um, the representative at the time that I was working with from that area in Northwest Arkansas, um, that's pretty much when they really kind of trying to started trying to avoid me. Um, so like I said, when I, when Linda had approached me, um, I didn't think she would do anything. Uh, she had told me she had gotten a basic file from them. They wouldn't give her any information, even though she was a U.S. Senator and they're required to give her what she asked for. Um, all of a sudden the records are know where to be found. Nobody can, you know, um, it, it, it was it was obvious something was being hidden in that area. So and I and uh, and I made her aware of everything that had been going on throughout the case, and she had spoke with my attorneys, my you know that I'd had prior, and they all told her pretty much the same thing that there was children being produced on demand. So Peterson's arrest and uh, that case was like a just further solidification in your mind that you and Susan Collins Smith had been on the right path and that your, your suspicions and your research was being proven correct. I believe she had proof of all of it before her death. Um, She had uncovered a lot of information that came right back into her own home and was really struggling with it. Uh, She, even before she had taken my case on um she had started discovering things that were going on and was having issues with stuff with um with the dhs and money and children being moved around and uh that's about when she lost the uh re-election bid that she had in um they pretty much got her out of office wow kathy this is quite a story and Honestly, I can't even imagine what you've been going through. I mean, if I'm if I'm understanding this correctly, this was a tragic situation. Your daughter was tragically killed in an accident by a drunk driver. No, he wasn't drunk. Oh, he wasn't drunk. I'm sorry. Okay. By a driver driving very fast in a 30, what, 35 mile an hour zone. And he was 71, he, yes. It was a hit and run. And he was, so it was a hit and run. You have to deal with this tremendous emotional trauma of losing your daughter. Your attention then goes to your infant granddaughter to try to provide for her needs. You come across the family court system there in Arkansas and all the problems associated with that. 
then it just gets worse. You, you find a friend in a, in a state senator who really begins to investigate why these injustices are happening in this family or dependency court there in Arkansas. And then all of a sudden she's murdered. You find out from social media that your granddaughter was adopted out, moved to another state. Then the news hits that Paul Peterson, this Maricopa County assessor who runs an adoption agency, is arrested on federal charges. And this is the person who worked with the same judge there in Arkansas that uh, adopted out your grandchild. I mean, this is like a movie. This could be a Hollywood movie that would be a big hit. This, this is almost too incredible to believe. And you're, you just want your granddaughter back. Isn't that right? That's right. Um, you know, when my daughter, when I got into my daughter at the hospital, um, as her heart was stopping, I made her two promises. And, and that was to fight for justice for her and to raise her daughter to be happy and healthy and know who she was every single day. So far, I haven't been able to keep that promise, but I won't stop until I am able to. Um, I'll never give up. I'll never give up on my granddaughter. That's what I have left of my child. And Linda and I had become very, very close. Um, it, it, was, it was, I did not, you know, I had a, a problem trusting anybody after my daughter's death because I'd heard so many different people tell me things and nobody had followed through with anything. I mean, I heard every promise in the world. And this lady really, truly cared, and she cared about all of the children, and she was very spiritual. And what was going on, or what is going on in Arkansas, was devastating to her. Um, she was somebody I believe would have come out, if it, if it would have been me, she would have come out fighting and yelling and screaming, and I'm going to do the same thing for her. It was very difficult, and we're not even through it yet. So in two years' time, less than two years' time, I lost my child, my grandchild, and my best friend. I'm so sorry for your loss. That's just too much. That's just too much. It is too much. And days before uh, Linda was murdered, she had written something um, showing. It was a, a picture um, on Facebook, and it was a uh, a lab that had been, the owner had been arrested um, and charges brought on her for falsifying um, drug test results and different uh, stuff for um, DHS. And she had written a big thing on there um, stating that she knew of another family that uh, the same thing was done. That was our case that she was talking about. Uh, they had changed the hair follicle results on my daughter and accidentally handed my attorney at the time uh, both sets, and it wasn't discovered for a year later that they had been falsified and that we had both sets of results. Um, Linda had never stopped trying to fight for myself and my to reuni reunify us with my granddaughter. Well, Kathy, we appreciate so much that you would take time out to chat with us, and, you know, we wanted to bring your story to the public. It's, it's a, a tragic story and we're at least hopeful, you know, we're, we're hopeful that Homeland Security went in and arrested Paul Peterson and we hope to see justice there. And we hope that that investigation in Arkansas, Arizona, and Utah will uncover a lot of this child trafficking that we seem to see is is actually happening and we we're just hopeful that you will see some justice in this case and as they investigate linda collis smith's murder we really hope and pray that they will find the people we know that there is somebody in custody now but there's a lot of controversy over that whether they have the right person if that person is involved or not and we won't get into that that's up to the investigators that's up to the legal process, but 
We really hope I and pray. Yeah, I, knew the, I knew the person they had in custody also. You know, I think one of the biggest problems with Arkansas and with everything going on with the child trafficking is nobody wants to let this out. Nobody wants for this to come out about their state or a county or a judge. So it's my belief that they're protecting them. Um, and that's going to be one of the hardest things to get over is, you know, our own government hiding the fact of what's going on. There's a lot of money involved in moving these children around. There is. And we've been covering this issue for quite a while now as well. We've been concentrating on the medical kidnap show here on KFNX. We've been concentrating on the state of Arizona. We have documented much of this. Uh, we've had, for example, Neil Suits on the show, who married into the Mormon church there in Arizona and has tried to be a whistleblower into what is happening with the hierarchies and the business leaders in the Mormon church. And then Paul Peterson now has been arrested with ties to Mormons in Utah and Arkansas. And we're not, we're not out here to condemn a religion. This is not a religious issue. We want people brought to justice, no matter what religion they're part of or what they're using. But there's a lot of pieces here where the, the, the connections have to be tied together. And the corruption in these states, we've seen it in Arizona, is so deep that it's probably going to take federal investigators to come in, honest investigators to come in and bring these people to justice. So again, Kathy, thank you so much for coming on the show. We will continue to pray for you and keep in touch with you, and hopefully we can have you back again soon. Great. Thank you for having me. Well, Brian, that wraps up this week's show. We have a few minutes left. Do you have any closing final comments? Yes. I want to pick up on something that Kathy said, which was that she seemed to be dismayed that the cover-up of what is happening in Arkansas seems to go, you know, all the way up to the higher branches of government and the judicial system. And that's a really hard thing for victims. And let's face it, when you're a grandmother like Kathy, and you've seen what the system has done to your family, you're a victim too. You're a victim too, because you're trying to get justice. And here, the only woman who would listen to her and advocate for her is murdered. How is a victim, how is a parent who unjustly loses their child, how are they supposed to fight the system when the corruption goes all the way up to the highest levels of your state government? Now, remember, we. We've been covering these medical kidnap stories for about five years. In the first year or two, very seldom, if at all, did we talk about child sex trafficking. And do you know why? It's because nobody wanted to talk about it. Everybody was afraid. The people who had anything, any kind of knowledge about this subject knew that the problem of child sex trafficking went all the way up to the highest levels of government. And if you try to start poking around, this is what happens. What happened to Linda Collins Smith? Now, I have written many times on Health Impact News, our Health Impact News Network, medicalkidnap.com, that we are nonpartisan, okay? The people who read our articles, listen to our shows, they're progressive liberals, they're conservative, Dem uh, conservative Republicans, whatever. They're, they're, they are from all sides of the political spectrum. What we have in common is we want to expose the truth. The truth is a nonpartisan issue. Child sex trafficking and the problem of pedophilia in America today is a nonpartisan partisan issue. So when I say what I'm about to say, it's because I'm dealing with the facts of the current administration. 
is not that I'm getting involved in partisan politics, which obviously when you read the news today is at an all-time high as far as dividing this country. But there are certain issues that should not divide us, and this is one of them. And so I just want to remind the public, no matter what side of the political spectrum you're on, it was federal agents in 2017 under the Trump administration that went in and removed David Frodsham as a foster parent in Arizona. Local law enforcement didn't do that. They didn't deal with that problem. Here in 2019, it was the federal government, the Department of Justice, that arrested Jeffrey Epstein. Now, they didn't keep him alive, and I'm not going to get into whose fault that was. He was in a prison in New York, the state of New York, and he never came to trial. But he escaped justice for years and was finally arrested in 2019. Paul Peterson indicted in three states. None of those states' attorneys initiated the investigation. Again, it was a federal agency under the Trump administration, the Department of Homeland Security. These things weren't happening before. They're happening today. And I don't want to get involved in the politics because, frankly, I don't care. I don't care. If you claim to stand for the rights of children and families, then you shouldn't care either. Because these states are corrupt. There is no doubt anymore that they are corrupt. And the only way I can see where justice will prevail is if the federal government comes in and takes control of these investigations and brings the perpetrators to justice. Because this has been happening for a very, very long time. This has been the Medical Kidnap Show on 1100 KFNX Radio. You can follow us on the web at medicalkidnap.com. Also, subscribe to our podcast, The Medical Kidnap Show, and follow us on YouTube under The Medical Kidnap Show.